Hello, I'm Kate and I'm going to talk about how I organise my photographs for my Photo A project. I've taken photographs a day for the last two years and I've learnt quite a lot of things through that. One is that you need to be organised. I um, organise my photographs into um, scrapbook layouts and my aim is to print a book at the end of the year with 52 layouts. Unfortunately, I haven't actually finished a book yet and I'm going to share with you the tips I've learnt and how I'm going to set things up this year to make it different. Now, first of all, Project 52, Project 365, or Photograph a Day, they're all the same thing. It's about capturing moments in life, the big and the little. We've got pretty good at taking photographs of weddings or birthdays, but what about those everyday little things, like maybe what you've had for dinner, a change that you've done in the house, something funny the children have done. They're things that now seem small, but in a few years time, they could mean a lot to you to have that recorded. The two areas that I've struggled with are um, collating my photographs. I usually take photographs on my phone or my camera, but I could also be taking them on our SLR or on my daughter's camera. I also have a small fisheye camera. It depends what I've got to hand when I'm taking the picture. So getting all of those in the right place or at the same place and then organize so they're actually by week and secondly selecting a photograph some days it's not a problem some days you've only taken one picture some days you're taking a picture just before going to bed because you've forgotten to do it it's easy those days but what about the days where you've taken tens of pictures hundreds of pictures maybe digital photography it's wonderful you can keep going to get those perfect ones but then you have to sort through them. And again, it's a wonderful thing about taking a photograph a day is that when you come to choose a picture, you are really choosing your best picture. It isn't necessarily the best photography picture, it's the picture that tells the story best to you of that day. So I'm going to talk through my system of how I'm going to, how I'm going to do this this year. First of all, we organise our photographs by event. We have a folder for, um, at the start of the year at the moment, these are the zero folders for each child. I've also got one for the picture that I take for the blog, and then those random pictures, um, which don't fit any other category, go into uh, my P365 folder. This doesn't give you a very good indication of what it's like. We haven't done much this year yet. But if I go into last year's folder, See here, we've got a photograph for our holiday, one from we went away on the bank holiday, um, the first day of school, and these are all sorted by month. And these are the way that we keep our pictures. This is the record. What I don't want to do for my photograph of day pictures is to um, take them out of this folder structure. So I have a different folder structure, which I actually keep on a memory stick, so I can carry it around with me so when I have a few moments of time, I can sort through them. And here I have a folder um, for each week. So this is week one and then the dates of that week as well. So I'm going to copy photographs into that folder. Um, so I retain the original file structure. And I do this by doing the search on date. So I don't need to go into each, um, each folder manually. So if I, in the search filter, I'm on Windows 8 here, I can select a week and it's going to bring up all the photographs taken within this week. And I, I'm going to copy all of those into this folder. Next stage is to narrow down these photographs to seven for my layout. I admit occasionally I do eight on the layout if maybe we've done two things in a day and they're such different things I can't choose one over the other but I never do more than eight and it is hard and I try to stick seven. The lowest I've ever done in a week is five and that was a week where I didn't take many pictures so I didn't have many to choose from. Within my folder, when all the photographs have transferred, I could create a subfolder for each day of the week, but I prefer 
to keep them within the same fold structure because then I can see what's been going on during the week, how the overview of the week. So I don't get all photographs of the house or I don't get all photographs of my son and none of my daughter. I try to get a balance as well within the layout. Because these are copies of pictures, I could delete them. But to start with, I create a folder, which I just call not use. And these are just so that what, when I'm looking at that balance and it's not quite right, I can come back to those and maybe pick something new within that folder. So to help me work out photographs, I can see I've got 41 items here. I use a program called Bulk Rename. It's there in my right click menu. There are other um, bits of software you could use. If you haven't got that many, you may want to rename them manually as well. Because these are actually all off my phone anyway, they are already dated um, within the file name. So I perhaps don't need to do the bulk rename. But if I bring them in from my um, camera, they don't have, um, they have a file name, a number, rather than a date in the file name. Now, this software is a bit scary to look at to start with because you've got all of these options at the bottom which you can change. But it also means it's very powerful. So what I'm going to do is select all of these files. So they're the ones I want to change. And first of all, I'm going to remove the first N here. The first however many numbers of characters I need to do from the file name to remove everything that's there. And what you'll see in this new name column is what the name will be once we've gone through this process. So you see it's gone green because there's a change there and those details are gradually going away. And it doesn't remove the um, type of file at the end there. So I'm removing the first 21 characters. I then want to auto date the file. It doesn't matter whether I'm prefixing or suffixing this because it's all that's going to be there. There's a prefix. And you get a choice of the type of name, of the type of date you want to use. And if you look here on the file, you've got three dates, created, modified, and accessed. The created one is not when it was created on the camera, that was when it was created on the computer. So what I want to use is the modified date. So I'm going to go with the modified current date and I want it in the format of year, month, day because then they're going to be ordered in the right order. Again, that may not be necessary for this number of photographs, but it's just that's the way I always label my files which involve the date. And then I've also got the option to number the files. So I'm going to put a suffix on here with a separator and I'm going to start at one. And then we have two padding. And what that's going to do is add a number on the end. Here we've got 13, 14, 15, 16. So it just means that there's no duplicates within the file names and we're not going to have a problem saving it. So now I'm going to rename all of those files. 40 files renamed. And that means now when I come into this folder, I can easily see which day the photographs are from. So now I am going to start sorting through these pictures. I'm not going to go into detail about how I do my layouts now. Um, so I also have um, templates created for my layouts to make it as easy as possible. It means I get consistency through the page, but the main reason is it's quick. If I was to do a proper uh, digital scrapbook layout, um, I would be taking so long to make decisions about um, what papers and embellishments to use, um, I probably wouldn't actually finish it. So here I have a template, it defines where the text is, and also how much space I have to put the photographs, and I have some masks I can use to put the photographs in, although I will change these depending on what type of photographs I have for that week. But I can just bring all of those into Photoshop and 
um, add some papers behind it um, which are based on the colours that are in the photograph and then that's my scrapbook and my photograph a day layout finished. Thank you for watching.